Jeff Brom, Purdue's head coach, has laid out a spring plan for the Big Ten. Now, this is not saying that the Big Ten is gonna gonna follow this, but he is the only one that has released publicly any kind of an idea of what a season in the spring might look like. Now, they are he is basically conceding that we are not gonna do anything from right now all the way through December. So his first order of business is we would have a two week training camp starting on January sixteenth when everybody comes back to campus. And it would end on February, sorry, on January 29th. Then you have your typical four-week training camp, which is what you typically have in the fall. But you would have that from Saturday, January 30th through Friday, February 26th. You would have two days off per week that would be mandatory, a maximum of two practices and full pads per week. Then you have an eight-game season from February 27th through April the 17th. Then you have, I, he put in a plan for a 16 playoff with five Power 5 Conference champs and a wild card. Or you would have the typical four team along with the Big Ten Championship, Rose Bowl, et cetera, whatever. Uh, basically, the end of the season would be April 18th. And you would have three months off until July 18th. Now, this is where it gets a little hairy, all right? This runs into the fall 2021 season. And that's why it gets a little crazy. You would not start anything, no summer training camp, until July 19th. You would have basically everything off until July 18th. Then you start your summer workouts July 19th through August 27th. You have a one-week off period until Labor Day. And then you begin your four-week training camp on Saturday, September the 4th of 2021. A 10-game season would begin Saturday, October 2nd, running through Saturday, December 11th, and then you will have the Big Ten Championship game, whatever, running into a 16 playoff or the 14, whatever. The, your bowl situations would be Saturday, January 1st through Saturday, January 15th of 2022. I, I love his idea of a 16 playoff. Any kind of expansion for the playoff, I'm, I'm obviously in favor of. But... Um, I, I love how well it was put together. It's incredibly creative. It is a beautiful document. Anybody that loves documents, I'm a big fan when you are incredibly neatly organized. But, good gracious, you were talking about them having pads every month of next year, like practicing in pads every month other than June, July, and... August, maybe, but, it, I mean, depending on when your camp starts, when your actual season starts, I mean, you could be in pads in August. So you would have three months off, and, and you're going to be hitting each other all of those different months. If, if we're talking about player safety here, I don't know how feasible this is. Chris, do you agree? No, I'm not worried about that. I think these guys can take the, the padded practices. That doesn't concern me at all. That it just doesn't. We we just don't we just don't have a history of I mean we get knee injuries, we get stuff like that. People just don't get a lot of concussions in practice. I agree. And, and I'm not even worried about concussions. I just think that, man, this is a lot of wear and tear. But th- 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 these guys are young, they're fine, they're not old guys. It's practice. Most of that's practice. But the two things that I'll take on this, okay? I'm gonna be the wet blanket on all this crap. All right. If you were afraid to play now, you're gonna be afraid to play in January because nothing Nothing in our life is going to be different between now and four and a half months from now. Yeah. Okay. And if you think it's going to be, then you're naive because I thought in February and March that by August, all this stuff would be gone away. And I was naive and I was wrong. If you think five months went by and nothing changed, I don't know why you think in four and a half months, something's going to change. All right. If we have a vaccine by then, it's not going to be heavily disputed, distributed enough to, to where it's going to make a difference. All right. Yeah. So that is just, if you're afraid of, of the virus and that is why you're not playing because of safety, I believe it's because of fear of litigation, which is, which is, that's not going away either, by the way, it was unsafe to play in Mar- you know, in August and September and October. And so now the lawyer is going to say, well, now you magically thought it was safe to play in January and February. No, my client wants $20 million. Thank you very much. I'll take a third of that. Um, 
it, it, it's just it's just it's just ludicrous. Okay, so that's that's laughable, and I I think we can play now. That's my opinion. I'm not a doctor. Played one when I was younger, and that's it. But I just I don't know what they think is going to be different. Now, it was pointed out to me by guys smarter than me that we should have testing then that you can basically spit on a swab and know. And so testing will be a lot faster. But if that's the only variable that changes, nothing else has changed, then then you still can't play. Yeah. Just because we know if you have it quicker or not, does it change the fact of what do we do if you get it? Because not one team has a protocol in place if they catch a damn Rona. No, they, they have – teams do have that in place. That, that right is now during thing. practice time. Once the season starts, we don't have anything outside of isolate that person. So yeah. if it's Trevor Lawrence, what do you do? What do you do if it's your quarterback? What do you do if it's three of the five offensive linemen? And, like, well, for what, the most part, what, next what is up, the answer but, to that? Because the answer can't be, well, the show must go on. Because now you put other players at risk, not from getting the coronavirus, but from broken ribs, ACLs, and head injuries because you have inferior, uh, you know, talent out there that's yeah. that's not ready. It, I mean, you're you're correct. But so that's the January part. That's January. Yeah, part. That's January. Yeah. The other side of that coin is is only playing so to mitigate some to where you can't just play 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 all in one calendar year like you addressed they'll back down next year to 10 games see which is not happening <laughs> i think that's not going to happen at all because we know all of these conferences are losing tons of money okay i believe they are closer there's a better chance that they'll play 14 games next year which i'm not saying they will there's a better chance they'll add two games than they'll take away two games in 2021 simply for the fact of we got to make up money. We got to make up revenue. And so we're going to kick the seat. We're going to start at the same time. Maybe instead of week zero, everybody's playing. That's now week one. And and we're going to finish two weeks later than we'd normally finish. And we're going to all add two games and add a, a bye week. So we, we expanded the season three weeks, and boom, bang, bing, we, we can start recouping some of the money we lost in 2020. I think that has a better shot than asking these teams that just lost a lot of money to all lose money again. Take, take, they won't lose money if they play 10 games, but, but to not maximize their revenue stream. Well, no, they, I, they'll lose money. Like it, oh, it, ten will, game, they won't lose money for ten games. Oh, a hundred percent. They they would have lost money this year on ten games because it's not the same amount of inventory. And no, I understand where you're coming they, from. You're not. You're not. You see. See. This is. They will make less money. That is not losing okay, money. Okay, they okay, will okay. still finish in the black. Gary. Yes. No. What? I'm, okay. By losing money, I'm saying that there no, was. When money I say to be losing had. money, they're in the red this year. They're spending millions of dollars and they're not bringing in any income. That's losing money. Okay. 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 The me, idea of we used to make a hundred billion and now we only made thirty billion is not losing money. No, but the the option was on the table to do twelve games, and then they chose to only do ten. And obviously, because of certain that's specific- because of the co- conference control that had right. nothing to do with safety. It had I all to do agree. with they need control. And I agree with that a hundred percent. By the way, um, let's dive into these comments really quick. Uh, Michael said, where were all the plans and ideas for fall football? Spring football is a joke. How many years is this going to set these programs back? Oh, some, yep. uh, it, they may never recover. Like, it's just, yep. it, this is how, it, when you when you spend money the way that college football programs spend money, and they have to because if they want to continue to get that money. If they they got to keep up with the Joneses, baby. Yeah. But not only that, but anything that you make over, like, you, you can't just you store it. it. You have to spend it yep. so that your budget can continue. That's just the way that these government things work. If they want to remain a tax-exempt institution, then you have to do that. You cannot show that you are for profit. So you have to spend all of this money that you get in, which is why they are in such a mess right now. Because if there's no money coming in, that means that there's no money in the account. There's just nothing. So you're in a, you're in a bad way when you don't have the television contracts that are coming in. Uh, the Brown Yeti said, the five champs in the SEC runner-up, I like it. Uh, Tanner Lee jumps in. He said, Jeff Brom, that's my football coach. 
Uh, there you go. It, it, this no, is not no, a. No, and uh, listen, it's a we, beautiful we talked about document. this yesterday. He's one of the innovators. He's one of the coaches with a brain. All yeah. right, there aren't a lot of those guys. He's he's one of them. Uh, the Brown Yeti said the only thing that will change in January is public opinion. You're right. You're right. Yeah. The election will be over. Uh, Michael Fritz said, why don't they just tell the truth and say they aren't playing until there's a vaccine available? Uh, Matt said, but they're risking their lives for losing money. <laughs> and then he said, how is the weather going to affect kids in the spring? At least in the fall, it starts to get hot. Or it starts hot, but gets cooler. Spring, it can be hotter as you go into the season. And that's one way to look at it. And, and uh, my God. If they're finished in the season in April, nowhere in the country is it hot in April. Uh, agreed, agreed. But if you're starting, say you start in January, I mean, how, it, you know, you're in Purdue, you're in Michigan, you're in Wisconsin, whatever. Well, I mean, whatever. so yesterday we had, uh, and I don't know where this came from, but somebody put a plan for for eight games, and they were just basically the Big Ten's got to play all indoors. And so, you, and there's enough indoor facilities that you can rent out that aren't being used um, around those those areas. Well, I guess if you did like a bubble type thing, well, you don't need yeah. to do a bubble just every week. Everybody buses to, you know, two teams got a bus to Indianapolis or fly to Indianapolis. Two and teams then, fly to Minnesota. Yeah. So, I mean, you, there's enough indoor facility stadiums that you could rent out. Every Two teams fly to Dallas. I mean, you pop on a plane. This is Power 5 football, man. Matt said, They're, uh, they're going to charter planes anyway. Matt said more volatile weather early in the year, snow and storms. Yeah. It's true. I mean, That's true, but that's not going to stop them because they're not going to play in them. Yeah. I mean, it just is what it is. Damien said, screw the money. Life is more important than anything. Yes, money can buy stuff and pay bills and help people keep their jobs, but money can't buy you life back once you lose it. And we're not talking about losing life here. Um, yeah. You know, obviously, if there is a potential threat to life, then yes, obviously, they won't play in in the spring or ever. But either way, the Brown Yeti said they practice all day in the summer and it affects them, and then you could play more at night. Um. Okay, I I guess. Well, they're not talking about playing in the summertime, so it doesn't matter. Uh, Michael said, I heard either yesterday or the day before Chris say seven on seven. Why not do a handful of those to at least let these kids get some film? Hell, I'm just wanting stuff. any kind of problem solving, any kind of troll. Is anybody throwing any ideas at the wall to see if this shit stinks? It, it doesn't appear to be. I mean, it really doesn't. I don't know that that's a good idea or not, but it's an idea. We're going to, A, take away the people that, that are really mashing together, okay? And and so everybody else is kind of hand-fighting and open in space. And, you know, yeah. the, the guys that are more at risk because of obesity and things of that nature, the big boys are taking off the field anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, here, are the, here are the facts as far as not being able to play in the spring. Uh, it is unlikely a vaccine will be widespread enough by January that it can be gobbled up by thousands of young, healthy college football players. Yep. Number two. They'll be it, the last ones to get it. Yep. Number two, it is unlikely the virus is going away by that point. 100%. Uh, and it's then not number, magic. Number three, it is hard to imagine the Big Ten country will be in a better position with the virus when it's cold out and flu season is thrown in than when it is warmer outside. That's too much logic and reasoning for me. I can't handle it. Yep. So, uh, while Jeff Brom made a really nice, organized, incredibly neat. Sounds document. good. Sounds good. Looks great Looks on paper, great. man. Call call me when you think, because at the end of the day, you and I both believe this is not a health and safety for the kids thing. This is a we don't want to get our asses sued thing, right? Oh, 100%. Are we, we're on the same page. I, everybody yes. not, might not believe that. Everybody might not be as skeptical as we are. Um, I, I think that. I'll speak for me, not you. I think that. Those lawsuits aren't going away. Those lawsuits actually become a lot stronger if somebody gets yes. sick. And the, like I said, the plaintiff attorney gets to stand their client out and say, these people knew it was dangerous. They didn't let him play in the fall because it was too dangerous. But all of a sudden, magically, the calendar changed, and they thought it was now safe for him to put himself at risk. Oh, yeah. He'd like his check, please. Where, where can where, are we just going to get bags of cash like they do the recruiting? Or are y'all going to cut them a check? Or how does this work? Uh, Michael jumps in. He said, I really just hope that at least the SEC gives it a try. I think that's all we're asking for. If it doesn't work, at least they tried. It, it won't be the SEC by themselves. If the SEC, which the ACC has a meeting this evening, and they are going to discuss it and, and whatnot, but it, it appears from everything that everybody has heard, they are moving forward. The Big 12 is moving forward. The SEC is moving forward. And several of these smaller ones 
So let me up. ask you this honest question. See, so we've, 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 we've dumped all over the big 10 and that's fine. At what point, if these three conferences do this and they get a month into it and they are seeing very little problems whatsoever, is, are we at a point where the big 10 are they, are we so dug in because we want to, we in our country, we like to win arguments. We don't care about getting anything right. We just want to win. Right. Even if we're wrong, we want to win. Are they going to dig their heels in? Are they going to say, Hey, can we, can we start a a month late? Can we jump in? Because we've been working out. We've been, if I was those coaches and I was those athletic directors, that's what I would be asking is, okay, we've already lost this fight with the presidents. All right. So we're going to continue to work out. We're going to continue to practice. We're going to continue to stay in shape. If these guys try it down South and it works and it's fine. Can we then play? I don't think so. I think because they, why have do you already, think not? Well, because they've already canceled. They've already done all that. They have shut down for the most part, their training camps. So, and while they still have the 20 hours a week of practice or whatever, it's not the same thing. So at that point, you're risking even more injury, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, but once, but once you're, you're two weeks in and you see it's good, they well, could the give thing. the okay like, to start training camps. If they had, if you're two weeks in and you start training, well, then, I mean, what do you do? You cut it down to like a six game season and you just try and come up with something? I mean, it, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that'd be all yeah. right. But you could play everybody in your division then. This is why everybody was so pissed off, right? Is you yeah. did not have to do this right now. Why well, but here's the thing, doing now. it right now is not the because here's the deal. The reason it takes six weeks of training camp is because you're going from ass on couch to ass on field, all right? But if you're working out and you're training 20 hours a week every week still, then you don't need six weeks of training camp to get in playing shape. Do you really think these kids are still going to be putting in the same amount of effort that they would have been? Like, uh, I just, I don't, the I don't ones see it. that think they can play on Sundays 100% will. The other ones probably will just because they're young and it's a competition. You get in that weight room with other folks. Dude, I knew I wasn't good at football. But when I got in that weight room and I saw these other dudes throwing up weight, I wanted to throw that shit up. I didn't have coordination, but but I, I didn't have balance. But I had strength, and, and I we, wanted to compete I, because I could I'm compete in there. I understand where you're coming from, but I'm I'm also of the mindset like like we've talked about on the show multiple days this week. It, once you take away that carrot, once you take away the uh, the incentive, yeah, but what you have to do is dangle the carrot back and say, guys, there's a chance, there's a hope. Yeah, but there you had that, and then you took it away by saying that I the get season it. was. Well, now you got to try to sell them again. This is part of it. It's the bed you made, man. I just at I, some point I don't time you should quit. I don't I don't see the Big Ten coming out and saying. Uh, yeah, I know that we canceled, but, like, if everything goes well down there and we let the SEC be the guinea pigs, then, you know, maybe we can do it. You know, it. I just don't see them doing that. I mean, it doesn't It doesn't make okay. a whole lot of sense for them. I've, I've, I, would, I would like to think that they're smart enough to say we're, they're not so prideful or egotistical to where they'd say, maybe we got this wrong. If That'd those be, dumb rednecks down south can do it, we can do it, right? It, it'd be nice. It would be nice. And then and then and then they ramp up. They get going. And hell, they might not finish their season until the middle of January. Who cares? Uh, it really Who doesn't cares? matter at that point. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They still get the season in. <clears throat> and speaking of that, the college football playoff committee is uh they are still having their discussions. They met today. They are getting ready. They it it doesn't matter that four of the ten conferences have uh have dropped out and multiple independents have dropped out. Uh that doesn't matter to them. Like, they're still rolling forward. If these conferences are playing, we're going with what we got, and we're going to have a playoff. And, you know, cheers to them. I mean, it, it's – now they did it through Zoom call today. Now, why they can't do Zoom calls that, any other That's time what they need to be doing. But, I swear to God, these oh, assholes. Yeah, yeah we, we've been through that. Uh, Michael said it's 1,000% a CYA approach to this by the presidents, 0% about safety. Um, let's see, Michael said – Win, uh, not be right. That's the dim slogan. Sorry to get political. No, it's all that's good, not. Man. That's not. But that's not. That's not true. If you don't think the right is doing that, then you're part of the problem. Yeah, I'm it's, just it's telling you. Them. Everybody would rather be that would rather win the argument than be right. Everybody would. Uh, Brown Yeti said App State in the playoffs. Uh, ben said that's actually America's slogan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Damien said question with all the problems that are uh, the college football is starting. T- Hold on. Let me let me try and. 
gauge this. Question with all the problems that college football is having to start their season, do y'all think the NFL is probably looking at what's happening and rethinking about starting their season? Absolutely not. Nope. Nope. NFL is rolling forward. Those are paid employees. The college football problem is litigation. That's yeah. their problem. There won't if they be had a litigation. union and these players had representation, then we would not be in this mess. These guys would be playing if they wanted to play. Yep, you are correct. Uh, speaking of the NFL, let's go ahead and switch topics here.